Hi, this is the second part of the video looking at song 5, which is the title track on the album. And this part of the song starts off with the entity taunting me. And this is the part that I play on the album, the character of the second entity. And he's basically saying that when I'm awake, I leave him in control. And if you remember what I said earlier about these demons and entities being manifestations of irrational fears and negative thoughts, and that those are still there in the back of our mind when we're awake, controlling the way that we view the world and affecting our behaviour. So this entity was in control when I was awake, and for it to be something so terrifying in my dreams, I knew that it had to be quite a big fear lurking constantly in the back of my mind. And it gives a hint as to what it might represent when he says in the song, I am your death. I sometimes wonder if these fears are inherent or instinctual, especially with the monsters always finding a home in the darkness of the cupboards in my dreams. And I know that this is a common theme in kids' nightmares. And I've heard theories that these fears are passed on from our ancestors from a time long ago when there were things to fear, hiding in dark caves and in dark holes in the ground, things that probably wanted to eat us and that these fears are passed to us even now and we're born with them, now that they're, even now that they're not, no longer necessary. And I guess these fears are connected with a fear of death, specifically death by hungry predator. So back to the next part of the song, and I've used dream signs to become lucid, and I've remembered my dream goal, and now I have to make my way to the house where I grew up and confront this new demon which had taken up residence in the bedroom cupboard. My first two or three attempts at this involved trying to fly there. I then tried to drive there, and in an effort to leave the task in the hands of my subconscious, I tried getting a bus there. But these methods failed, mainly due to the fact that where I then lived was several miles from the house where I grew up, and covering that type of distance in a dream amidst all of the distractions that your mind conjures up for you as a difficult task. So after some discussion with my brother, we worked out a new way of travelling in dreams. It was something that we had only messed around with up to this point. I don't know if there's an official name for it, but I call it FYWI or FYWT which are acronyms for feel your way in or feel your way there. And this method involves picking the place that you want to visit in your dreams and then going there in the real world. And while you're there in the real world, you pick an object, you close your eyes and you run your hands over that object, taking in all the details for a couple of minutes. The idea is that the next time you find yourself in a lucid dream, you close your dream eyes you then imagine yourself back there, holding on to the object, and gradually it becomes more and more real until you find yourself at the desired place. Because if you think about it, there is no distance to cover in the dream world. You're inside your own head, and as the song says, you're outside of time. You're not travelling through space. So in this case, I took a trip to the town where I grew up and I casually strolled by the house where I used to live, stopping for a feel of the gate to the front garden. And I figured this was as close as I could get without the new occupants wondering what the hell I was doing. So I closed my eyes and I took in the detail, feeling the gate for a couple of minutes. And then the next time I found myself in a lucid dream, I closed my dream eyes and I imagined myself back there and I imagined feeling the smooth paintwork and the rough, rusty underside of the upper rails and then feeling the cold steel of the bars and gradually it became more and more real until I felt like I was actually there and then I opened my eyes and I found myself standing in front of the house where I grew up holding onto the gate. Now I know that having seen films like The Matrix, that method of travelling in the dream world might seem like a long way for a shortcut 
And there's definitely something to be said for the quarter inch jack and the back of the neck plug and play method that Neo and his friends used in the film. But regardless, I had made it. I had reached my destination. I had accessed a very specific memory deep within my subconscious mind. A memory which of course housed something very dark and ominous. An unknown obscure fear that was hiding just below the surface of my awareness, lurking surreptitiously in the darkness beyond the borders of my waking mind. A place otherwise known as the bedroom cupboard. I tried to stay calm because something I learned a long time ago in lucid dreams is not to get too excited or you'll wake yourself up. I then ran into the house and up the stairs to the room where the entity waited. The cupboard door was open, but there was nothing to see, just a horrible feeling and a terrifying presence. And I shouted, I'm not afraid, this is my dream. And when I did that, the contents of the cupboard started to shake and tremble. I then started to walk towards the cupboard, repeatedly shouting, I'm not afraid, you can't harm me. And as I did, the shaking got more violent and the clothes and objects in the cupboard started to flail around. I got even closer and the door started to bang open and closed and inside everything flying around in a hurricane and the whole time this horrible disturbing roaring noise getting louder and louder and as I approached there were clothes and boots and toys and shoes flying past my face in a whirlwind of chaos and just when I got to the point where I thought this isn't working but they turn and burn and run like hell. Everything stopped. And I found myself standing inside the empty cupboard. And the entity was gone. It's gone.